Hey there, Ted Hargrave from Marketing for Hippies, and today there's a little bit of a tip on copywriting, on writing sales letters or uh, sales pages. Basically, the idea is this. They should read like a conversation. A really simple idea, but it can help, I think, uh, with the, the structure or the flow of it. A sales letter should read like a conversation. Uh, because what is a sales letter doing? It's replacing a human conversation, or at least trying to be a surrogate for it. Uh, there was a woman, Kasuma Sparks, who was in my mentorship program. And she, her website is beautyandvirtue.com. And we were talking, and she was really resistant to this idea of a long sales letter. But she makes 90s, and those 90s are, uh, well, last time I talked, $600 for a 90. And some of you are upset already, thinking, what the hell, $600 for a 90? How could somebody charge that? Well, I tell you what, if you read her sales letter, you might be thinking, how could, how could she charge so little? because there's so much that goes into it, so much time and effort in the quality material she uses. Uh, you know, frankly, we underpay almost everyone in the textiles industry. You know, uh, and by underpay, it's sweatshops and, you know, the, the deal. If we really paid our, you know, crafters and farmers what they really deserved, it'd be a lot more money. Uh, you know, and so that's why... A lot of us go to the chain grocery stores and it, because it would be so expensive. Well, anyways, this says a lot about our priorities as a culture and the economic system we're in, and that's a whole other conversation. But uh, she was really resistant to writing a sales page like this, and I, because she said, you know, in a in a store, there's no there's no price tag at these like boutique couture kind of uh, you know high end clothing stores. There's no price tag. There's not let alone a sales letter for it. And so she was like, I don't know, I just want to keep it a lot of white space, very simple, not much text. And I got another message from her on this little app, Voxer, that I use. And she said, you know what, I'm realizing, of course there's no price tag or sales letter because there's a salesperson there. And if somebody's interested, they have a conversation. And it's often a fairly prolonged conversation because they're asking questions about the designer, the materials, the, the style, you know, the, it's, there's a whole, there's a lot to know. So I said, God, that's what, $10,000 for that dress, that's a lot of money well, but look how many hours it took them to make it and the materials that they used. And this was all done by hand. This wasn't done in, in a factory. This was done by somebody local and they tried to use local materials when they could and et cetera, et cetera. And suddenly you realize, oh, wow, they're actually only getting paid about $25 an hour. Whew. Wow, that's not very much. So that conversation would hopefully do what Mac Ross said was the, the role of marketing, which is to establish the value beyond the immediately apparent. I'll say that again. The purpose of marketing is to establish the value beyond the immediately apparent. And that's what a sales letter can do. But the purpose of the sales or the flow of it should be as a conversation. So in a clothing store, they can have that actual repartee, that back and forth, but you can't do that in a sales letter. So one has to sort of anticipate what they would say in, in response. So this is how to think about this. As you're writing it, you think, okay, once they read this chunk, what would they probably think? And it might be like, that seems $600 for a 90, that seems outrageous. That could be like a quote, anticipating almost that that's what they'd say. And then you respond to it. And then you think, what would they say in response to that? And then you respond to that. What would they say? So you imagine it in that way, back and forth, back and forth, instead of a monologue where you're just dumping something on them. Because if it reads like a conversation, it's very compelling. You're reading the sales letter and you think in your head, you think $600, that's outrageous for a 90. And that's the next thing you read. See what I'm saying? That's like, oh, you know, um, I'm sure you could think of examples for your own business. Um, you know, <laughs> I might anticipate something like marketing can feel good. That's ridiculous. But I say that, and they said, that's exactly what I was thinking. Um, you know, even the headline, of course, in some ways, is a response to the unspoken thing they say. Why is niching so hard, is one of my headlines. Somebody reads it, yeah, why is it so hard? They didn't even say it, but it's like, he read my mind. That's, a, you know, that's almost how it should be. They should be reading the sales. It's like, that's eerie. Man, it's like they're writing it as I'm reading it. That's the goal. Make your sales letters more like conversations with somebody rather than um, monologues and diatribes at somebody. And I think you may find that they work a lot better. They come across warmer, more human, um, uh, more honest, more direct, uh, 
more useful, more candid, all of that. So I hope this is useful. I do have some other videos on copywriting. I'll put the link below. If you want to subscribe to my videos, click the red subscribe button and the bell icon. I'm at marketingforhippies.com. You can join my email list there. You can find me on Facebook and leave a comment below if you have any questions about copywriting and it may turn into another video that I do. Thank you so much.